Did you do this? Did you pull that off? <laughs> Did you do it? Did you destroy it? No. Oh. No, it wasn't you. Twix. Twix. Who did this? Oh. Hello, welcome to today's vlog. Please excuse my hair. I'm in like a weird transition period because I'm trying to do the curly girl method and I also just keep cutting loads off. But yeah, I know the thing you're probably all dying to know is how Crumble is doing. The last kind of vlog I did was of his neuter and he's actually running around on the floor at the moment so I'll give you a quick update. So here he is, he's doing good. Say hello. Hello. So his abscess did actually pop, which is good. It popped about two hours before his vet appointment. I did still take him anyway just to get him checked over because he did have the second one kind of in this area. Um, but you can't actually see where the abscess was anymore. It was here and it's healed up really nicely, hasn't it? Yes. So I did take him to the vets and I think what we kind of came to the conclusion happened is he did just have an allergic reaction to the type of suture she used. So she put a note on his file just in case he has another operation anytime, which hopefully he won't, um, not to use that type again. So yeah, thankfully Crumble is on the mend and his surgery seems to have worked. He does seem a bit less hormonal towards Humbug. We won't really know until we try to do introductions, which looking at my calendar, I think we're gonna do on the 24th possibly. That's gonna be six weeks after we neutered him. I could possibly try to do it early if I wanted to, but I think I do want to wait the full six weeks just to make sure all of his hormones and stuff are out of his system. So yeah, 24th of July, they could be meeting each other, which I'm gonna be really grateful for because one, trying to keep them away from each other in the separate cages is so annoying. And also because I don't have the Perspex tray on the top section of the cage, my floor is just constantly covered in rat bedding. I have actually done something temporarily to try and fix that, which I'll show you. So here is my temporary solution to having all of the bedding kicked down because as you can see, the base pans are not very deep and I was just getting so much bedding on the carpet. So I got frustrated and I decided enough is enough. I'm gonna zip tie some cardboard pieces all around the outside and that's actually done quite a good job. They do sometimes kind of try to lift it up as you can see and then it starts to snow hemp, which is great. But these boys are also doing really good. Do you wanna say hello? Oh, big yawns. So it's been really interesting obviously getting to know them over the past couple of weeks and getting to know them properly because when you first get rats, their real personalities do take a while to come out. Twix is definitely a lot shyer than I thought when I first got him and he does tend to just let Whisper push him around and he's a bit shy, aren't you, buddy? Whisper, on the other hand, is absolutely crazy. <laughs> At first, I thought he was just sleepy and calm, but his crazy side has definitely started to come out. And he also sleeps in really weird positions. I'm not too sure whether it's because they didn't have hammocks in the rescue, but they've only really just started to learn how to use hammocks, which is really cute. But yeah, to me, their personalities very much remind me of Crumble and Humbug. Whisper reminds me of Crumble, Twix reminds me of Humbug which, fingers crossed, should actually work in my favour because Twix and Humbug can pair off and be best friends and Whisper and Crumble can be crazy together. But they have put on so much weight since I first got them, I did get them to put on some weight. You're so big now. Look how big you are. Twix, on the other hand, I think he's always going to be a small rat. Maybe he was just the smallest one in the litter, but he's getting there, <laughs> aren't you? So yeah, that's the update on how the babies are doing. I guess they're not really considered babies anymore, but... To me, compared to the other rats, they are baby babies, aren't you? What are you sniffing? <laughs> so there's a couple of things which have changed in the pet room and I wanted to show you because things are always changing. It's been a while since I showed the whole pet room and things are a little bit different in here. So the first thing that's changed is I have these Sorterra waste bins from Ikea. I've wanted these for such a long time. My friend Emma used these to organize her rat food and I wanted to do the same thing. So they're definitely bigger than I was expecting. I was expecting them to be a little bit smaller. They take up quite a lot of this space, which is a shame, but maybe I'll try to figure something out to have a better organization of the room and put them somewhere else. But for now they're here and they have my air purifier on top. So the reason I wanted these is because I did have my rat food in a smaller container and that just meant I was making my mix quite often. The thought with these is to just bulk make a massive load of mix 
Right now there's not too much in there, I'm not going to go into detail of how I make my mix in this video, but I do actually want to make a lot more of the mix and just fill it to the top, because then that means I don't have to make it as often. So yeah, originally I was going to have rat food in this one and mouse food in this one, but because they're so much bigger than I was expecting, I don't think if I filled this with mouse food that I'd ever get through it. Um, so what I've done instead is I've got the rat mix in this one, and then what I do with the mouse food is, because it's quite similar, whisper, <laughs> because it's quite similar I just make the mouse food following this and make a few changes to it. So this rat food is in here, this is already mixed. And then in the bottom one we have the base mix, which if you know anything about doing the Shunamite diet for rats, you use a base mix and this is the Harrison's Banana Brunch. So the next update is not necessarily a happy one, but it is a reality of owning pets. And as you can see, my leaf insect enclosure is now empty. So all five of my leaf insects have now passed away. The last male actually passed away yesterday and I've just completely cleaned out and emptied out the enclosure. So I was actually more devastated than I expected myself to be when they started to pass away. I had them pass away about a month ago and every week or so one would pass away. And yesterday my last male passed away so we now don't have any leaf insects. Time has actually gone really quick though. I was really sad they were starting to die but I realised that the last one must have been about 11 months old. I got them in August and they only tend to live about 6 to 9 months. So the fact that he lived about 11 months I think is really good. Um, but I just didn't realise how old they were um, until they started passing away. But we do of course have their eggs. These ones were laid in February so they should be hatching sometime soon. Hopefully this month so if they do I will film that for you. And then these are some of the last eggs they ever laid. A couple of weeks ago I think so these should be hatching I don't know five six months from now so these have a little bit of a way to go but I just wanted to keep some of their last eggs. I was only intending on keeping 30 or 40 of the first eggs, but when they started passing away I was really sentimental and I just wanted to keep the last couple of them, so we have a couple of batches of eggs. This one is just an empty container. But I have also ordered some more leaf insect eggs. You guys are probably thinking at this point, do you not have enough eggs? But if you remember last year I did actually have some Filium Tobolance eggs and they never hatched, I'm not sure if that was something I was doing wrong or if they just got cold in shipping, but they never hatched and I really, really wanted that species of leaf insect. So I thought now there's probably not a better time to try to hatch them again because I really want that species and I really want to keep them. The colours are so cool. I love having the Philium philippinicum. I will also be trying to hatch them and I will probably get a separate enclosure, but I really, really want to try again with this species. So here they are. Now when I was placing the order on the website, I also noticed they had some captive bred millipedes and you guys know I don't really want to have any wild caught millipedes. So I did kind of jump at the chance to get myself a couple more captive bred millipedes. I was just feeling really bad for Magnum being by himself. I think Solero is still alive in there, obviously we won't know until he decides to come out. But a couple of these species that I did pick up are actually a lot more active on the surface rather than burrowing, which is what happened when I bought the bumblebee millipede. But I just felt really bad for Magnum being by himself, so I did kind of pick up two more millipedes at the same time. So yeah, I'm guessing they're all in this container. I can see, yeah, there's the eggs on top, kind of taped to the package, so I'm going to open this up and have a look. I'm really excited. I love millipedes. I didn't expect myself to love them this much. And I promise you guys I'm not going to go crazy, I'm not going to order too many more. I probably will stop here, but I just wanted to get Magnum a couple more friends. Okay, yep, this is the container with the leaf insect eggs in. There's 30 in here, they did come in a batch of 30. I couldn't really pick the number I ordered, but hopefully some of these hatch and I have a bit more success this time. I'm going to set these up in a separate container to the rest of the eggs. They do visually look a little bit different, but I do just want to set them up separately with some paper towel in a separate container, so we're going to do that in a second. But let's take a look at the millipedes. There we go, so you can see both of them. There's one here at the front, and then a smaller one at the back. They are a really nice colour. I wanted some that were a different colour and not too dark this time. And this one is going to get a lot bigger. This is a Burmese beauty millipede, and the one at the back is a rusty millipede. I'll put both of their scientific names on screen because I will butcher them if I try to pronounce them, but I'm really excited. They're so cute. So this one is the bigger of the two. This is the Burmese Beauty Millipede. This is going to get a lot bigger. I think a similar size to Magnum. So I think I'm going to name this one, sticking with the same UK ice cream names. 
This one is going to be called Jubbly. So I tried to insert a picture of what this one should look like when it's fully grown. I think it does have a lot of growing to do still, but I'm really excited. I'm really excited to watch it grow up and hopefully see this one be a lot more active in the enclosure. So this smaller one, this is the Rusty or the Scarlet Millipede. They go by a couple of different names. And due to the colour, I think I'm going to name this one Calippo. So while I stand here and give the mice some treats and let you guys look at them, I did quickly want to update you on the store because a lot of people have been messaging me or commenting, asking when things are going to be back in stock, and I can now finally happily say that things are back in stock. So pretty much all of the pet supplies are now back in stock, whether they're in stock right now as you're watching this. After I said things and people have gone and bought them all, I'm not too sure, but things should be back in stock more readily. Things shouldn't be going out of stock too often, because I can now get stock more available readily, because I can get deliveries and stuff now. I have actually had to hire somewhere separate, which I'll insert a clip here if I can get one, just to show you guys what my little storage place looks like. But I have now hired that and that does mean I can get deliveries, so things shouldn't be going out of stock as often. I have also got a couple of new products which is really exciting and there's a lot more that I'm planning on getting. I'm trying to get things like Sputniks for mice and rats, so that should be really exciting. So if there was anything you were interested in purchasing, firstly, thank you so much. Secondly, do check the store because it should be back in stock. Speaking of my store, I do have something to tell you about the pins. Obviously the whole process of designing enamel pins and getting them made is a very lengthy process, but I do have something to show for it. So this is what they look like. I think they're really cute. Obviously I don't have the pins to show you with them on, but just imagine a really cute wrap pin in the middle of this. I've designed them to have tiny little wrap paw prints on the background. So I think these are really cute and I'm really excited to see the pins. Obviously as soon as they turn up I will tell you guys and show you, but for now this is all we have to show you. What do you think? Clove, what's this? <laughs> you can't eat it. No. Look at her eyes. But Sprig will do the same. Sprig! What's this? So the mice are doing good. Olive does actually have a skin condition which we've been trying to treat for a couple of months. I haven't said anything because I was trying to get some sort of answers just to make it as educational as possible. First I thought it was just mites so I did treat her for that. Then it did get a little bit more serious, she started losing a lot of fur. So I've taken her to the vets twice now and we're still not entirely sure what it is, which is frustrating, but she has started to grow her fur back, which is good. But she just looks a bit rough. She's feeling okay in herself, she's running around with the other mice, eating, drinking fine. She's always been a bit different. She's always been on the smaller end and she's always had like weird ingrown toenails ever since I got her, so I'm not too sure whether she's just not the healthiest mouse possible, but she does seem okay in herself, she just looks a bit bold. So if you see her, that's why. She's doing okay in herself, as I said, but she's just having a bit of hair loss problems. Due to whatever skin condition she had, we're not entirely sure. We treated her with steroids, antibiotics, and also we did mite treatments twice, but the steroids seem to clear up her skin and make her fur grow back, so we're just kind of waiting for it to grow back fully. So yeah, that's Olive's update. Hopefully she <laughs> grows her fur back and doesn't look as tragic as she does now, bless her. So I think now we're actually gonna go and do some geocaching, which I've been sharing a lot on Instagram and TikTok, and it's been confusing a lot of people because not many people actually know what it is, but it's really fun and I thought it'd be really interesting to vlog it too. So I'm gonna to try to sum this up as best as possible. Geocaching is basically like real life treasure hunting. You use a app on your phone and it navigates you towards a geocache using GPS. And geocaches, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe them. They're like little containers, some of them are really small, and they just have pieces of paper like this, and you sign your name. Other ones are bigger, like boxes, 
And these have items in you can swap and trade with people. So I'm going to take some items to swap if I find anything I'm interested in. But it's really fun, it gets you going to different locations, gets you out, active, going for a walk with an actual purpose of finding stuff. So I thought it'd be really interesting to take you guys with me and vlog the experience. Thank you.